Hey everyone, this is Mr. Saints Godzilla 21, and today we're gonna be playing some Saints Row, but with a little twist. It's been known for quite some time that nearly all the console commands can be found in both Saints Row 1 and even its demo files. However, thanks to Stippo and Amoose, you can create your own patch to activate the console for either Xenia or an RGH Xbox. With that said, why don't we start up Saints Row 1 with the patch and see the best commands the console has to offer. If you're familiar with Volition's Breaking the Build or Anniversary streams, then you've already likely seen a handful of commands for the first Saints Row. Sadly, not all of them can be accessed without an earlier dev build of the game. So certain commands like dropping items, vehicles, and NPCs are missing or flat out don't function. There are also a few commands outside the console that use the tilde key that unfortunately don't work as well. These include activating slew mode, equipping all drugs, and opening a list that brings up all the missions, activities, and cutscenes. There are some commands in the console to start cutscenes and missions, but they either freeze the game or don't work. Thankfully, there's still dozens of working commands we can still play with. Let's begin with a fairly known command that has appeared in every single Saints Row game, Ugly Mode. With Ugly Mode enabled, the game's textures are downgraded, the draw distance is drastically lowered, and shading is removed. This is typically used early in development to have a higher frame rate while testing gameplay mechanics and features. I'm sure if the Wii port for Saints Row 1 wasn't cancelled, it would have looked something similar to this. Another interesting command is Player POV. When entered, objects and textures only stream where the player is facing. Anything outside this green zone will appear invisible until your player faces it. A similar command called R Level turns off all the world's textures. You'll still be able to traverse the map, but you won't be able to see anything beyond NPCs, vehicles, and some static geometry. It reminds me of the Ghost World glitch from the GTA series. With camera distance, you can set the radius of the camera from your player. At zero, the game will appear to be in first person, and anything past 100 will give you a bird's eye view. It tends to give off an early GTA top-down vibe, which by the way, there's a command for that called GTA Cam. Setting the FOV has some interesting effects. Below 10, it zooms the camera directly into the playa, whereas anything past 100 will turn the world into a stretched out nightmare. For content creators out there, the show HUD and turret command are perfect for machinima videos. The first command will turn your HUD on and off, and turret makes your player invisible. These are perfect for taking screenshots or recording awesome footage. One command I was very shocked to see was camera first mode. What this does exactly is allows you the Phi name, which was a disabled feature in the full game. From Volition's 10th anniversary stream, we can see the ability was still available in earlier builds. It can also be seen in the Saints Row 2 art piece presented by Greg Donovan during his GDC Vertical Slice presentation. I'm actually surprised the feature was removed, it tends to work quite well during combat. Let's move on to a command that's exclusive to the demo. When player collide only demo is set to false, you can freely go through the demo's boundaries. It might be pretty easy to glitch through the boundaries normally, but this way you can save some time when exploring the unfinished zones of the city. Though I mentioned the command to drop NPCs doesn't work, you can however spawn homies. What's funny about this though is that the console will display a list of homies to spawn, but it's almost completely incorrect. Wong, for example, instead spawns Johnny Gat in his Vice King disguise. Samantha spawns Troy, Will spawns Dex, Laura spawns Lin, the Wheelman spawns Donnie, and Chicken Ned spawns Julius. The only homie that spawns correctly is Zombie Lin. Normally, you can only have three homies at a time, but spawning them through the console will let you have as many followers as you want. This will put a strain on the FPS, but it sure makes for some epic firefights. Also, something interesting I noticed is if you dismiss Donnie, Wheelman will be in parentheses in his name. Maybe early on there was plans to have Donnie become a Wheelman homie after defeating the West Side Rollers. Something else to note is that the homie command on the demo only slightly works. Nearly all the homies spawn invisible except for the Wheelman who has the proper female Saints model used in the release game. For some pretty fun commands, you can change specific speeds of your character. Oddly, there aren't commands for walking or sprinting, but you can alter how fast you move while crouching. Like the demo mods, adjusting your speed over 100 typically causes the player the ragdoll at the slightest touch of the analog stick. However, there is a command to disable ragdoll so you could basically turn into a crouching flash. There's also a command to adjust how quickly your player swims, which makes traversing the entire map a breeze. One of my favorite adjustments is to the player's jump height. You can get pretty high, but anything over 22 will cause your player to immediately ragdoll. There's also the problem of dying when you land, but you can set the fall damage to zero to be able to jump all over the map. The police helicopter has a few commands, like controlling its AI, but without knowing the specific commands to enter, it's unknown if this still works. At least we can have the pilot eject at the click of a button. 
Moving on to multiplayer, there are quite a few commands for the online portion of the game. Now, normally I wouldn't be able to get past the online lobby without more players in the session, but fortunately, there is a command that allows you to play any game mode solo. There isn't any specific commands for Protect the Pimp or Big Ass Chains, but in Blinged Out Ride, you can change the level of either team's vehicle and set the session's time limit. There are plenty of small commands like testing the bandwidth and connection, but some highlights include changing teams, altering the score, allowing mid-game joining, and altering players' names. For a pretty humorous command, setting Lightning Ped Strike Chance to anything over 100 will cause pedestrians to get struck by vengeful gods in the sky. This was apparently removed from the full release, according to Mitch Cronin during Volition's Breaking the Build stream of St. Trill 1. Yeah, and we were also messing around with the, the Lightning Strike thing. I, I don't think that made, like, there was the Wrath of God cheat code that some, did, did it, but... Did, did it... Did it actually ship at the end of the game, though? It was, I mean, I looked on GameFAQs, and there was well, the Wrath of God, which was the Lightning Strikes. There used to be a button that told us something that you could hit that would cause the player to instant, instantly be struck by lightning. Because they used it for, like, testing yeah. something. Yeah, I... But I don't think it... I don't know it, what it was. I don't, I don't... I think it was like that, and a few other things were eventually pulled. Well, at least now we can activate the feature, and it did make an official appearance and got out of hell. And finally, I want to mention an epic glitch that happens by opening the console. Perform the secret stash easter egg and open the menu to cause the flame effects to expand and engulf the entire block. This tends to happen anytime there's fire on screen, but it's most prominent when the secret stash is active. Turn on the turret command and you'll become a floating fireball wandering the fiery roads of the city. So there you have just some of the highlights the console offers. I probably could have gone on mentioning some of the smaller things like changing notoriety, windshield eject chance, and forcing NPCs to ragdoll, but this video would go on for far too long. Anyways, before ending this video, I'd like to give a special shout out to my Patreon sponsors. John, Jordan Flattery, Delta, Scissorp, KM, Sam Just, Sis121525, In the Bayou, and The Outcast. Like always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.